Welcome to this video on William Golding's The Lord of the Flies. In the next few minutes I'll use just 10 quotes to help you understand the key ideas as you prepare for tests, essays and exams. All round him the long scar smashed into the jungle was a bath of heat. Now the first thing to say is that this quote tells us the story is not going to be a traditional boys' adventure story like Coral Island. At a literal level, this refers to where the plane has crashed, ripping a path through the trees. A bath of heat suggests the indentation caused by the plane was deep and hot, and in fact fire imagery is used frequently in this story. The symbolic description of the crash site as a scar is personification. It suggests the island has been scarred or permanently defaced by humans. The verb smashed also introduces the idea of extreme violence, a theme of this book. The quote is also an allusion to the Bible. Humans were originally banished from the Garden of Eden for eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. In this story, they bring that knowledge back to an unspoiled island paradise and will eventually destroy it by fire. Quote 2. The creature was a party of boys. This is how Golding introduces the choir boys led by Jack. Now one might think choir boys to be highly civilised, but Golding describes them as a creature. This gives us a hint that when the boys form a group, they can develop animalistic tendencies and a mob mentality. I say can develop because although savagery is a key theme in this book, it is not inevitable. The battle in the story revolves around who can control the boys. Will it be Ralph, who is described as decent, mild and fair, or Jack, who is described as ugly, arrogant and angry? We must make smoke on top of the mountain. We must make a fire. A fire! Make a fire! Ralph has one main goal. He wants to create a smoke signal so that passing ships might see and the boys can be rescued. But the boys lose sight of the goal and get carried away building a huge fire that burns part of the jungle, killing one of the young boys in the process. This quote tells us that the boys are looking for excitement and that getting them to keep a small, smoky fire going will eventually become problematical. Rescue? Yeah, yes, of course. All the same, I'd like to catch a pig first. Jack seems to agree that being rescued is important, but notice the question. Rescue? He has to think about it before being able to remember. That's because it isn't Jack's real focus. He wants to hunt and kill a pig. So we can infer from this quote that Jack is not very interested in being rescued and that of course is why the fire soon goes out and the opportunity to be rescued will be missed. Round the squatting child was the protection of parents and school and policemen and the law. Descent into savagery is a theme of this book, but the boys don't immediately begin attacking each other. Their behaviour is initially moderated by the memory of the rules they had been taught in England. The conjunction and is repeated several times, you'll notice. This is a figure of speech called polysyndeton, and it reinforces the way society has several ways to temper our worst tendencies. Here, we have four ways by which we are educated to behave well. By parents, and schools, and police, and then the force of law. The memory of these forms of authority is enough, at the beginning of the story, to protect one of the little boys, Henry, from being harmed by Roger, who only throws stones near to him, but doesn't actually hit him. We might note that this constraint will, of course, not last. When Roger opened his eyes and saw Jack, a darker shadow crept beneath the swarthiness of his skin. Now, Roger is possibly the most sinister character in this book, and here Golding uses a metaphor to suggest Roger's evil side describing it as a shadow that creeps beneath his swarthy or dark skin. 
The choice of verb, creeps, is a word associated with being furtive, meaning secretive. Once Roger is a hunter, his hidden, darker or sadistic side gradually emerges. Roger will torture a pig by jamming a sharp stick further and further inside it. He will kill Piggy and he will sharpen a stick at both ends, presumably to display Ralph's head after they kill him. Fancy thinking the beast was something you could hunt and kill, said the head. Simon, the kindest character in the story, suffers a fit whilst hiding away near to where the boys kill a pig. Hallucinating, he sees the pig's head impaled on a stick and thinks that it is talking to him. The rotting head is literally covered in flies, but it's the connotation of this name that really matters. The Lord of the Flies is another name for the devil, and the head tells Simon a terrible truth. The beast is not outside us, but inside us, and that is why it can never be killed. As long as humans are alive, the potential for evil always exists. It can only be suppressed, resisted and controlled. Kill the beast, cut his throat, spill his blood. When the boys are fearful during a storm, they chant, kill the beast, to create a sense of togetherness. They chant this incantation five times and then murder Simon, who ironically was coming out of the forest to tell them that the supposed beast was only a dead airman. Notice that this attack is something that they have rehearsed twice before. First, pretending that Morris was a pig and attacking him but not hurting him. Second, they attack Robert and physically harm him. This time, they are so fearful that in a frenzy, they seem to confuse Simon with the beast and do not stop until they have killed him. The rock struck Piggy a glancing blow from chin to knee. The conch exploded into a thousand white fragments and ceased to exist. If the death of Simon can be explained by fear and frenzy, no such excuse can be made for the murder of Piggy. This killing is conscious and cold-blooded. Looking down from high above, Roger rolls a huge boulder onto Piggy, killing him and destroying the conch. This is relevant because Piggy is a symbol of rational thought and the conch was the symbol of authority and cooperation. Savagery now rules. In addition, before he rolls the stone, we are told that Roger viewed Piggy as a bag of fat. This takes away his human qualities and makes it easier for Roger to kill him. You don't know Roger. He's a terror. And the chief, they're both terrors. Only Roger. At the end of the story, having been captured by the hunters, the twins, Sam and Eric, now realise the threat posed by Jack and Roger. Note they begin with Roger. You don't know Roger. This chimes with how Golding described him in chapter one. A slight furtive boy who no one knew. Now they have good reason to be frightened of Roger and Jack. Wilfred was beaten by Jack for no apparent reason and Roger has committed murder. Roger and Jack retain power through fear, not fun. And the phrase only Roger leads us to think that he is the worst of the two. Finally, a quick bonus quote. Ralph wept for the end of innocence, the darkness of man's heart and the fall through the air of the true wise friend called Piggy. At the climax of the story, Ralph narrowly avoids being murdered. But he is no longer the carefree boy who arrived on the island doing handstands on golden beaches and swimming in clear blue seas. Ralph now knows that humans are capable of extreme cruelty and from a young age. But note that the moral of this story is not that all humans are savage, but that we all have the capacity for savagery. 
So when we see prejudice, mockery and violence as used against Simon and Piggy in particular, we should not stand by and allow it to happen. We must resist it. Because eventually that savagery spreads and it will affect us all, as Ralph discovered. So I hope that gives you some useful insights into this book and thank you for listening to Dr Aidan's Guide to Literature. Give a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video and subscribe now so that you don't miss any of my future posts.